Hi, everyone. We'll get started in just a moment. Hello and welcome to today's webinar where we will cover 2022 year in gifting and planning with 529s. Today's webinar is sponsored by Ohio's 529 College Advantage. Thanks, Paul. Host... And... Oh. Sorry, just to start with some housekeeping, I do just want to note that we will have the audience chat enabled today. So in the um, Zoom control panel, you have access to the chat and can engage with our speakers and audience today and participation is encouraged. We'll also have Q&A throughout the webinar. Um, in the control panel, you also have a Q&A button where you can submit questions at any time. And if we don't get to your question today, we'll follow up with you afterwards. Today's webinar will be recorded and you will receive the replay information in approximately 24 hours. And there is a brief survey at the end of the webinar. We appreciate any feedback that you have with us. And now I will hand it off to Paul and our presenters. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Tara. Much appreciated. I'm your host, Paul Curley, Director of 529 Enable Solutions with ISS Market Intelligence. And today we are joined by Tim Gorell, Executive Director of Ohio Tuition Trust Authority. Today's agenda, we have a number of topics that are, are geared towards year-end planning and, and year-end holiday season. First is holiday and year-end gifting strategies with 529s, 529 reminders, tips, and best practices for year-end planning. We have a, a new addition to our Myth Bust, Buster series and for um, you know market data that we like to cover every quarter, 529 market data trends, a couple of industry announcements, product releases, research releases. Uh, at the end, we do have a dedicated se se uh, section on questions and answers, but we will be taking them, the questions and answers throughout. We do have the, the quick uh, housekeeping in terms of functionality. There should be a chat button that, that will allow users to just you know chat throughout the session. Um, that is visible to all speakers. We also have a Q&A section as, as well. Um, thank you, Mike, for the, the question already coming in, which is which is great to see. Um, we, we, and as, as uh, Tara mentioned, we do have the, the recording available, um, you know, post session. And there's a brief uh, post um, session webinar uh, survey for, for uh, to improve over time as well. Overall, this series is a today's session is a continuation of our webinar series that we started in 2020. And the real goal is to share and learn best practices, support the industry and, and community, but also to create that long-term growth by keeping the ongoing product, product, um, product training, product developments, updates, news, and, and trends, and, and things of, of that nature. We also, also have a quick save the date for 510 Conference 2023, September 19th to the 21st. It's a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in Florida. More to come on 529conference.com website. Before we, and as we jump in, we'll jump in quickly to a holiday and year and gifting strategies with 529s with Tim. Tim, do you want to provide yourself a, a larger introduction and, and then we can jump into uh, today's first, first section? Thank you. No, I, I like just to just take the time to, to talk about the, the 529. I guess I should add a disclaimer. Uh, I am the executive director for Ohio's 529 plan. We're a state of Ohio agency, so we're not for profit. Uh, we fall under the Department of Higher Education. And by law, uh, I am not uh, at liberty to give tax advice or uh, financial planning or that type of, uh, uh, of advice to, to, uh, to people who are listening. We'll, we'll simply facilitate information and uh, answer any questions the best that we can. So 
So any conversation, I think, uh, about 529s, uh, before you get into what a 529 is, and, and I know we have a, a, a broad listening uh, uh, base or viewing base here. Uh, some of you are very familiar with 529 plans, some uh, you know, to varying degrees of 529, and others uh, just looking for information about 529 plans, given uh, maybe a situation in, in life right now or that you've, you've heard about it. And as I started to say, I think that any conversation about a 529 plan has to start with why a 529 plan. Uh, I think you have to start from the basis that uh, uh, for a given beneficiary that, uh, that they will do something after high school. Uh, and, and this uh, may be a trade school, a technical school, two-year public, private, in-state, out-of-state, uh, what I'm trying to say is it may not necessarily be a brick and mortar four year college and pursuing a bachelor's degree in a, in a given discipline. Uh, and so those will have some sort of cost to it. And so many people the, today, and it's increasing each, each year, are relying on loans to, to pay for those expenses. Now, the downside to that is that uh, you, you, a person works hard, uh, they, they come out the other end with the certification, the training, uh, you know, the degree, whatever the case may be, and going into an exciting field uh, only for the foreseeable future and, and many, many years, paying three to $400 a month to pay back the loan. Uh, this comes at the expense of uh, saving for retirement, uh, maybe buying a home, uh, maybe starting a family, uh, any of a number of things. So a 529 plan is an alternative for that. It's uh, simply a tax advantage way to save and invest for those possible education expenses af after high school and for some other things too. We'll get into that uh, further in into our, our discussion here. Uh, as I said, after tax dollars are invested in, uh, in, in the stock market options. Uh, these grow tax free and whenever they're used for qualified expenses, uh, they, there is no tax consequences. Uh, 529s have been around since the mid 90s uh, and very, uh, a few handful of states, uh, whenever federal legislation was established, uh, 529 comes from the Internal Revenue Code, uh, 529, uh, that, that part of the, the code. And, uh, and it was linked that, that states, a state entity would, would have to uh, manage the, these types of investments. Uh, some states, uh, the, the 529 falls under the treasurer's state. As I mentioned, ours falls under the Department of Higher Education. And uh, yet another state uh, may have a standalone state uh, entity. But all of them are uh, state-controlled, state-operated entities. Um, every state now in the country, with the exception of Wyoming, has a 529 plan. Uh, you're not limited. You don't have to invest in your state. Uh, like anything else, uh, we would recommend that you, you do your, your homework, shop around to see what the best option for you is. Uh, some states offer a, tax, a state tax benefit uh, to their residents who invest in their 529 plan. Uh, states that don't have an income tax, that, that is a, a moot point. Uh, a thing to consider is, is the, the fees. Maybe uh, your state has a generous uh, state tax benefit uh, regarding the investments in it, but the plan offers fees. And so how, how does that me measure out? So the thing to do is, is to shop around, look, look at, the, at a plan, and, uh, and if that's the best fit for you to sa start saving and investing, uh, do so. Uh, the thing uh, to take away from this is that just because you invest in your state's plan doesn't mean you need to go to an education opportunity into that particular state. Uh, here in Ohio, we'd love uh, people uh, in Ohio across the country uh, to choose our, our plan to save and invest for these education uh, uh, expenses. Uh, come out to an exciting or pick a, a, a great education opportunity here in Ohio. Come out to an, a career, an exciting career opportunity here in Ohio, live, work, and thrive. But not everybody's going to do that. And, and so it's across the country, a 529 is a 529 tax advantage way to save and invest, and you can take uh, those savings and investments and apply them to education opportunities across the country. Any education entity that has a federal code, you can use your 529 for. So what, what is, uh, there, there are several ways of, uh, of presenting and, and inviting your attention to uh, you know, to saving versus borrowing. And that's what we're trying to accomplish on, on this slide here. 
uh, if you using just a, a, a number of $50,000, if you save $50,000 versus borrowing $50,000. So it, depending on when you start, we're asked when's the best time for you know, to start savings. Uh, we would urge people to consider doing it whenever a baby is born, a child or a grandchild is born to start saving. And while it's, it's unclear that uh, you can uh, predict that th this baby is going to grow up to be uh, an accountant or they're going to uh, you know, be a, a hairstylist or any of a number, you pick the profession. Uh, again, going from that assumption, there's going to be some costs associated. The sooner you start, the better. Uh, but by no means uh, should people feel that they're limited, that, that that baby comes up on kindergarten or middle school or even, even high school, uh, that, that, they, that, that it's too late to save. Today's the best day to start and, and the best time you know, to, to invest for the, those expenses. And so this slide, what it depicts is if you, if you started whenever a child was born and you had $50,000 uh, through, through the market and, and, the, and the growth of those savings, uh, you, you may have upwards to $150,000 available whenever uh, that, that beneficiary goes on to those education opportunities. And if, you, if that covers all the expenses, you don't have to pay any of that back. Whereas you look at the right-hand side there is that's all you have to work for you, uh, that 50,000 that you borrowed, and, and it's, it's not going to, to growth. And then over the life of it, as you're paying it back, you could pay upwards to hundred or upwards to $80,000 in, in uh, you know, paying back that, that loan that you, you, uh, you took out. So what, what can you use a, a 529 for? We, we say that if, there are, if the funds are withdrawn and used for qualified expenses, uh, there's not a tax implication. Uh, so the, the 529 can be used for tuition and fees, room and board, uh, books, computers, and, uh, and any expenses that, that are related to that education entity. Uh, was added in, in uh, 2018 was you can use up to $10,000 for uh, uh, K through 12 tuition, whether that's in a private, religious, or any type of uh, education opportunity entity that, that you're paying a tuition for. Uh, that's uh, per beneficiary, and it's you know, 10, up to $10,000 per, per year can be used uh, you know, to offray those expenses. Now you, you might want to you know step back and say, well, wait a minute, yeah, you're you're talking about uh, education expenses after high school. Here's K through 12. Um, again, the uh, the rules for a 529 are established by the federal government, and Congress uh, saw to add this as a as a qualified option, you know, for uh, for 529 expenditures. And uh, and again, that's just for tuition. Uh, added uh, in 2019. Uh, we talked about loans and recognizing that loans may be uh, inevitable, even if you're saving. Maybe you didn't save enough, or maybe your your saving strategy was to save partly, you know, part of the, the expenses, and then use maybe other resources or even the loans to to pay for the rest of it. Uh, you can use up to ten thousand dollars for uh, per beneficiary uh, toward pay, repaying student loan loan payments uh, as as well. And that's not limited to a calendar, a given calendar year. Uh, that's if, uh, you know, whenever those loans come due, and if you're, uh, you have some uh, uh, 529 resources, you can apply those up to $10,000 for that student loan repayment. So Paul talked about uh, gifting. And so what about gifting? It's, uh, it is the holiday season. Uh, we hear all too often from, from parents, grandparents, that uh, kids have enough things. So why not consider contributing to uh, that beneficiary, special beneficiary, the special child's 529 plan? Uh, it's very easy to do. Uh, our, our plan, for instance, with when, whenever uh, an account owner opens an account, uh, they're given a U-Gift code, and we use the U-Gift platform for the gifting. What that enables the, the account owner to do is they can share that gift code with uh, family, friends, anyone that may be wanting to give a, 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 a beneficiary, that child, a, a, a gift in the form of a 529 uh, contribution. Uh, there is no personal identifiable information uh, connected to that. It is simply a gift code that if, if, the, if a gift giver uh, is, uses that, then those funds and, or that, that gift will be uh, deposited or put into that, that 529 account. 
Uh, and, and again, uh, and as far as the you know, look at your states, like here in Ohio, uh, whenever you come to uh, the you know, filing your income tax, I'd ask you, have you contributed to a 529 account? You don't have to be uh, the account owner or a family member uh, per se, you know, to be able to do that. You can still take advantage of, of Ohio's uh, state uh, uh, tax uh, benefit in, in that regard. Uh, uh, other states may vary. You, you would have to look at what, what your given state or what that state uh, offers to. And uh, you know, what, what better uh, gift though than, than a, a legacy gift like this? Uh, it's, it's uh, you know, whether it's birthdays, uh, holidays, special, uh, special occasions, uh, graduations or various uh, achievements, uh, you know, why, why not consider that, that gift that it's, it's a legacy gift? It's not going to wear out in, in a short period of time. Uh, they're not going to outgrow it. Uh, it, it is something that, uh, uh, that has a lasting and, and, a, and a very valuable and appreciative uh, meaning to it. So uh, uh, with, with that, I, I think I, you know, th that's the, the overview of 529s in general, and I'll be happy as we get into uh, Q&A uh, to delve in deeper to any of those topics or anything else that I haven't touched on uh, to help uh, further your, your understanding and uh, what, what 529s can do and what a valuable asset 529 plans are. Thank you, Tim. We did have a, a reader question from, from Yosh. How much in aggregate terms do people gift towards College America 529s uh, overall from our market data? And, and we, we collect data from all the different participants. It's a it's material, it's large, and it's it's, it's frequent. And um, you know, the, there's the birthdays, there's the year end, but does, does, do you have a, a, um, a way that you, you typically uh, respond to like in, in how much in aggregate uh, people get towards College Advantage or? No, we, we, we don't have that. It's a very good question. And, and that uh, we, we know that it becomes increasingly popular. Uh, be, and that comes as a result of what trust in the systems as far as contributing, uh, you know, that the, 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 the gift thing is not going to go somewhere else. Uh, we, we continually work our web page, you know, to, to amplify and, and to highlight and to make it easy for people to do gifting. And uh, also that uh, we, we've launched a mobile app this year and uh, coming enhancements will, will provide for that, you know, to be able to, uh, you know, for people to contribute. Uh, and, and again, we, I don't have any statistical uh, data on that, but just feedback from people when we communicate about this, and you know, we, we see an, an increase in, in you know, people uh, you know, going that way. Because I, I haven't had anyone when I say, uh, you know, parents, grandparents say kids have enough stuff. I haven't heard anybody say, oh, no, no, you're, you're mistaken. Uh, they need more stuff. And, uh, you know, and, and uh, they, they nod in agreement that, uh, you know, saving uh, for those uh, uh, education experiences after high school may be a, a better way to go. Agreed. Uh, a, a recent data point that, that I came across that I thought was very intriguing was that over 17% of last year's holiday gifting was was returned. You know, so these are people who you give someone a gift for the holiday, you, you did all the time, you did the effort, you drove to the mall or you ordered online and you got them the gift and they, and they return it. Um, you know, so for my take, it's like you should give the gift that they'll actually use and that, that they actually need, uh, which is, you know, saving and paying for, for future educational expenses. Uh, I, as, as someone who, who comes from a data person at, at, at heart, um, I really enjoy learning, like, you know, your um, survey stats around the, the survey of parent, the survey of, of the grandparent, you had a, a great ad around it, but I, I don't want to steal the thunder. Or do, do you want to provide the, the walkthrough of the storyboard? Um, you know, for the percentage of, of parent, the, the parent perspective, the, the grandparent perspective on, on that gifting side or? But, well, yeah, the, uh, uh, you know, we, we did do a survey on that and it's just a matter of having a conversation. Uh, it's roughly 87% uh, of parents would like their parents to help out with these expenses. And conversely, 90% of grandparents want to do that. And, and it's uh, like many things, it's a matter of communication, just, just having that of saying, uh, hey, mom and dad, uh, you know, the, the kids have enough stuff. And I know that you would like to help them. And wow, this would be a great way to help. And I'd like to add too that you know we we even have great uh, uh, gift cards for those occasions. We can send those to you, so at least there's a little something that that uh, signifies that that gift's been made. 
And then, uh, you know, the other the other part, and you know, we, we certainly can go into is uh, just the the uh, the gifting uh, tax advantages that uh, that the federal government has provided provided those parameters. Uh, I mean, it can be you know small gifts. Uh, you know, minimum twenty five dollars is is all, all it takes for a contribution, uh, and then those can go upwards to the hundreds or you know thousands of dollars, uh, whatever the case may be. Uh, and as to your point, Paul, it's it's a gift that they're they're not going to return, and uh, there'll be truly a lifetime benefit out of, from it. Yep. We we do have a question coming in from from Matt Sullivan. Um, is the four thousand dollar Ohio tax deduction a limit per donee or per recipient, the donor? Um, uh, it, it, Tim, you're you're probably more familiar with with your in in state uh you know com component, but I, I, I do I, for my take. It would be really that you know year ends a good time to take a look at at at, at these larger goals. Is it is it a, a, a good time to, to make the one year con like that that year in contribution to get get up to that number? Um, but Tim, do you have any any thoughts on, on that that opportunity at the, at the end of the year? Yeah. Yes, that's true, and, and and thank you for that question because sometimes people think that that's a max contribution limit, uh, and and that's simply not the case. And these will vary from state, uh, but Ohio it, it, the minimum contribution is twenty five dollars, and then each year it, there's an assessment made about what the max contribution for a plan can be. And uh, this year in Ohio it's five hundred seventeen thousand dollars, and next year it's going to go up to five hundred twenty three thousand dollars. So you. You got a law range in there, and and the four thousand is only what Ohio has said as far as uh, taking advantage. So if you contribute uh, anywhere from uh, twenty five dollars up to four thousand dollars in a given year per beneficiary in Ohio's five two nine plan, and you're an Ohio resident, then you can take that amount off of your Ohio taxable income. Now, if you have two beneficiaries and you've gone uh, that, that four thousand dollars, that makes eight thousand dollars. And should you go over that amount, it has unlimited carryover. So, so that can go over to the next uh, tax year. Maybe you wouldn't get up to that in, in, you know, next year. And even if you do and you go over that, you can carry over to the next uh, year. And so that, that's a, a great feature of that. And uh, but by no means is that, is that a limit. It's uh, uh, $4,000 per beneficiary. And, uh, you know, and that, that applies to your Ohio uh, state taxes. Sounds great. And um, as I like to do on this on these webinar series, I, I like to think about some, some book that this one is is nudge and it, it really kind of reiterates the importance of just, you know, sa saving small percentages and, and you know, saving 1%. How do I get started to save 1% of, of your, um, you know, income and, and maybe every, every year just increase it by half a percent or, or 1%. And it seems small, but going from 1% to 2%, you're literally doubling like the amount or rate at which you're you're saving and 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 you know that that idea of of taking the baby steps is a you know just a, a great opportunity. Another another idea for year end planning is year end's a great time of year just to to take a, a look at what happened in 2022. Perhaps you saved too much or too little. More more likely than not, you're you're in the, the bucket where, where perhaps you you wish you would be saving more. So year end is a great time of year to take a look at where where one, where one wants to go in 2023. And so you know, raising that, that automatic contribution um, is a great way to go. Another uh, cool year-end idea that I can, you know, came across was just sending a a, a link, uh, like a gifting link, like like a like a UGIF link, um, you know, along with with the semester end grades or, or yen grades, um, you know. So so I, I know for my children in, in grade school, they get they get you know grades you know twice a year, one in December and one at the end of the year. So you know just sending the grades along with someone who may be interested in in um, you know supporting someone's educational uh, goals is, is a great opportunity for for your end as well. So just thought about that one and so thought thought to share. But as we kind of think about five two nine reminders, tips and best practices for year end planning, Tim, just to know if you if you had additional, you know, reminders, tips, best practices as, as we kind of get towards towards that that um, year end side, you know, fr from a parent perspective, employer perspective, just just thought to ask, you know, broadly speaking for, for you, Tim. Well, I think uh, you, you hit on a big one and, and I don't think uh, that uh, it's there's harm in being redundant on that. It, it, it's important to, to start. Uh, so many people either there's a notion that uh, the 529 plan is for the extremely wealthy people. And, uh, and that's just simply not the case. If people that are extremely wealthy can write a check and, and then 
uh, you know, people that 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 aren't, uh, you know, are lo looking for different ways to save, uh, you know, for 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 education. And so uh, the the thing to do is get over that inertia. There there's a uh, a, a, a biblical uh, saying that the, the farmer that waits for perfect weather, weather never plants. And, and so there's probably never a perfect time. But uh, as, as uh, Paul suggested, uh, you know, start modestly. May, maybe it is just that $25 per pay period or $25 a month or you know, whatever the case may be. There's, there's no right answer to this. Uh, what we found is people who are, are saving and they start it, they're, they're going to contribute again. It's just getting over that initial uh, hurdle to, to start. So maybe you did start to say modestly like $50 a month. And uh, you, know, you realize that, well, that's not that painful. Uh, we, we could probably up that. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe there are some expenses that have vanished. Maybe uh, you know, the, there, there's a, a pay raise involved in, in a job, uh, any of a number of things, or just, just the fact that it's, uh, you know, we can do this. And, and then you increase it. And, and so then you're, you're off to the proverbial races, so to speak, if you, if you consider uh, doing that. Uh, and, and again, maybe your strategy is uh, that uh, as, as well. Maybe it's just a, a lump sum kind of um, uh, uh, sequence on that. It, it's like we, you know, a given time of the year, we're, you know, we're doing this, this gift uh, to the, the kids at the, at the end of the year around this time of the season, the holiday season. There, there are just many ways of, of, of doing that, but, but to do it. Again, going back to the enemy here, the enemy is loan debt. And, uh, and it, it should, as you're, you're thinking about these things, that should be what keeps you up at night, that if you come out at the other end of, of the education experience strapped with debt, and, and, and it, it just, it, you know, it, all these other things that, that it comes at a, at a high cost. Sounds great. And, um, you know, today is December 14th at, at 2.30 p.m. Um, you know, Federal Reserve and Jay Powell are probably going to present pretty soon in top of mind for me as, as the interest rates are, are set to increase. I, I would probably say that 529 reminders, tips and best practices that as the interest rates go up, the student loan uh, rates will probably float up inversely. Um, you know, the fifth third CD rate will probably also float up. Is is it at is it currently at at three point five percent, or is it going to go up the post change? Um, I, I'm very intrigued at the at that at that great uh, CD return. So just just curious as, as to how how that works when when that's said, and and just more information. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, our, uh, our our principal partner, one of our principal partners in our, our direct plan is uh, uh, is Fifth Third Bank, and uh, we not every five two nine plan offers a banking product or has a relationship with a bank. Uh, we do, and, uh, and and to the point about interest rates, it really has you know, not, not come up, you know, because it, like the regular uh, uh, savings and, and CDs, uh, you know, the interest rates haven't been very high, but with the movement of interest rates, uh, we, we're seeing an increase on that. And so with given our particular partner, uh, they've raised uh, interest rates to 3.5% on, on CDs, uh, you know, for the, the you know, the, the 12, uh, around a year, a year and a half mark level. And that's higher than their, their regular uh, offerings as far as passport savings. So what's the advantage in that? Uh, it, there's, this is a great time actually to be, to be investing in savings if, if your uh, beneficiary is, is younger. Uh, you, know, you have time and uh, you know, history is on our side that the market will come back and, uh, and, and things will, you know, will be, be good. Uh, however, if you're nearing that, that time, like, like retirement, or you're nearing towards that time, or you're using these 529 funds to pay for those education opportunities, you might want to consider uh, put, moving some of the, these savings into a, a CD or, or 529 savings a, a account. Uh, it has the same benefits. Uh, it's not taxable, but then you have, you're, you're preserving your, your wealth and, and uh, you may grow a little bit with that three and a half percent interest rate uh, that, that's out there. But uh, it's, it's, uh, it's insured, uh, you know, unlike your the investments into the stock market, those aren't insured or guaranteed, but with this, you know, you're, you're preserving your wealth. Great. Uh, th thank you, Tim. And, and a couple other uh, 529 rem reminders and tips. Like one is, uh, as I, I always um, you know, pound the table, is don't leave money on the table. Um, over 30 states provide tax credits or deductions. So, so broadly speaking, that that um, as we get towards that year end, if you want to 
reduce your, your tax uh, you know, liability as, as we approach year end, make the contribution to the 529s. Uh, another reminder is that the distributions need to be taken in the same calendar year, not academic year, but the actual calendar year as the, as the qualified expense. Um, you know, so it's a lot of folks make the um, confused as like, oh, it's the same academic year. No, it's the, it's the calendar year um, that, you know, the, in the year, in the calendar year that you make the, um, have the expense, you need to take the distribution. Um, and, then, and as much as as I as I on one extreme probably definitely agree with you know s starting small six dollars a day inversely on the other other side of the spectrum the, there's a couple you know, a couple different scenarios one is making the um, like it, with 529 plans you can make a five year gift so right at, as of 2022 like you can one can make the contribution up to sixteen thousand dollars without um, gift in estate tax clauses so you can one can gift eighty thousand. Uh, you know, today in, into the 529 plan. A, a, a second scenario, which is kind of intriguing, is that you can put in 16,000, you know, this year to hit this year's cap. And then on January 1st, 2023, you can put in the, the new uh, annual annual cap of 17,000 in, in, in one contribution and, in, in, you know, in one contribution, make a, a five-year gift of that 17,000 for a total of 85,000. So, so today put in 16,000, January first, put in the eighty-five thousand, and it's one hundred and one thousand dollars that that one can give towards education um, in a fairly short short period of, of time. It, that is that is per parent, that is per beneficiary, and, and broadly speaking, some of the advisors say that it's you know saving for education. Five two nines is a small ticket, but to the extent that one hundred and one thousand dollars is it's not a small small ticket item. So. Um, I, I I guess I'll kind of pause and see that, Tim, did I sort of explain it right? Or, you know, there's there's a couple different um, you know, just sort of um, you know, nuances to that, but just want to see if see if I kind of presented it sort of, you know, correctly from, from Yeah, yeah. From, and then uh in, in uh you know next calendar year that's going to go up and and uh I don't know if you if you, you noted that uh, the you have five years. And so as you if you're looking at estate planning and gifting in general. Uh, Paul's absolutely right. Uh, th this is a, a good thing to consider. And again, going back for all those good reasons we've discussed up to now, uh, you're, you're leaving a legacy. And what what a what a, what a tremendous gift. And MythBuster series, it's always one of my more favorite ones. A question that I've gotten a, a lot recently is: five T nines can't be used for on campus housing. That's sort of like the, the myth that we're busting. A lot of questions around. That that qualified expense for housing is it only for on on campus housing or can it be off campus as well? T Tim, uh, take it away. No, it's it's always a good question, yeah, you know, because uh, yes, uh, five two nine you can use your five two nine for uh, uh, room and board, uh, and and many times uh, uh, students move off campus or, or don't don't live on campus, their education entity. So yes, uh, yes, 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 you can use your five two nine for that off campus housing uh, or uh, room and board. Uh, the the litmus test for that or or the you know what you can take up to is whatever the uh, the school charges for room and board, you can take up to that amount, you know, for your off-campus uh, housing. And so you just just check with the the the, end, the school and uh, you know what what they would you know what it would cost to live on campus. Use up to that amount, you know, for uh, for room and board off campus. So yes, you you definitely can use your five two nine in that capacity. And uh, for myth number two, what if the five two nine assets are not used? Do you just lose lose the money? Yeah, uh, you know there there are many ways to you know to save uh, and uh, it, it, as far as far as education savings and uh, one of the advantages of a of a five two nine is one the account owner controls the account uh, it it doesn't have a shelf life some uh, other savings uh, uh, vehicles you know whenever the beneficiary turns a certain age they they take over those assets. And, uh, and then, you know, while the intention was that they're to be used for, for schooling, education, training, that, that kind of thing, maybe the beneficiary feels like they want to go backpacking the national parks. Uh, with a 529, the account owner controls the, the, the account. And so, so then uh, getting to the point of what, what if uh, the beneficiary doesn't use the 529? Uh, very flexible into transferring to other family members. Uh, maybe there's other children, grand grandchildren involved. You can you can uh, uh, transfer funds over to to those family members. In fact, the the federal government in regard to 529 has a very very broad uh, uh, 
uh, definition of a family member. I mean, we're talking, this goes from literally first cousin to in-laws and, and so everything in between. So it's very easily to transfer. Uh, the 529 has no shelf life. It, it doesn't uh, mean that the beneficiary turns 22 or 28 or any given age that uh, these, uh, the 529 must be used. So sometimes uh, maybe initially out of high school, a uh, beneficiary doesn't go to school or a training program. Let, let your investments continue to grow. So down the road that maybe that beneficiary decides on a, a, a school or education training opportunity they wanna pursue, uh, the funds are there. Uh, sometimes uh, beneficiaries uh, you know, will, will change their mind. They, they may go through one program uh, only for a few years later, wanting to go back uh, to get further education or schooling into that discipline or you know, change altogether. Uh, the 529 is, is there at work for, for that as well. Um, if, it, if it went all the way, there's, there's no one to transfer it for, or uh, the account owner doesn't want to use it for themselves, that's certainly an option. And then you decide to pull those funds, that would be regarded as an unqualified uh, uh, distribution. And so you would pay, remember, you're, you're invested after tax dollars, so you would pay taxes on your earnings and a 10% penalty because you do, took an unqualified uh, distribution. Yep. Um, it, and that's a great, great point in terms of how 529s compared to trust, where for trust, you really give that money away, where for 529s, you really, like the account owner controls the assets, can change the, the beneficiaries to, you know, between the children. Um, we, we did get a question around, um, you know, I, I, I'm a grandparent. Is it better for me to be the account owner? Or the uh, or is it better to open open account as uh, you know for for the parent uh, you know so it's really a question of uh, if if you're a grandparent is it better to to be the, the account owner or have the parent be the account owner I, and and so I'm asking the question here because I, I think part of that answer goes into like who 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 controls the account but I didn't know if you have had a had a um some additional color on on that question. Now, like many things, it's a personal preference. There's nothing wrong with either way uh, of, of doing that. Uh, you know, some we, we've heard of some grandparents, they, they, they have that discussion we talked about earlier with their children, and uh, they want to open up the accounts. And so they'll, they'll name the, the, uh, the parent as the account owner and, uh, and then designate their, their beneficiaries, their grandchildren, and then make the contributions using you know, any of the number of ways that, that we, you know, we've discussed here so, you know, uh, so far. Or sometimes the parent, grandparents just want to, uh, to have, uh, be the account owner and, and do that. And they have maybe several grandchildren and, and have visibility and, and manage it from there. Uh, there. There is a consideration uh, the way the, the rules are now, but this is going to change. And so hopefully in the next year or two that this will not be a factor uh, that the, the grandparent uh, account as a grant owner could have a slightly higher, uh, or could have a, a higher um, impact on the FAFSA. And, uh, but the legislation that, that's, uh, that looks like it's forthcoming, looks like it's gonna take that off the table. So that, that will not be, be necessarily an issue. So you wouldn't have to worry about it. Again, it comes back to personal preference of who wants to be the account owner. Sounds great. And we we have a couple more questions, and we'll ask them towards the towards the end. Shifting uh, gears over to to market data trends. Broadly speaking, the value of education continues to go up as one gets more education. The overall level of um, income continues to increase. We see that layer cake uh, continue even to and through the market volatility and the pandemic. More recently. In, and also, not only does more education lead to higher income, but it also leads to lower levels of unemployment. We can see that layer of cake shift up and down again uh, in this slide. And broadly speaking, um, the more level of education, higher higher income, and lower levels of unemployment. And that aligns great with overall the, the, the utilization of 529s continuing to increase year over year over year. We're very close to 16 million accounts. And at the end of 2022, I wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised if we tick over the 16 million total open and, and used accounts. Overall for year-end themes, the, that fourth quarter activity is, is very important overall for families and in, in the industry. About a third of industry uh, of annual gross sales, which is money coming in, contributions takes place in the fourth quarter. And a lot of that takes place in December. And about half of the net flows for the year take place in the fourth quarter. Net flows are is defined as money coming in versus money going out. Education is also a, a, 
a family goal. It's a and the holiday season is a great time of year to have that conversation. We touched on on the topic a couple different times, a couple different ways. But twenty two percent of five two nine account owners are grandparents, and ten percent are aunts and uncles. So education is is a family goal and a great time to have the conversation. One way to have that conversation is is through gifting. Roughly four percent of the contributions in the fourth quarter typically is coming in through these formal uh, platforms. Good reference to you know you gift. And those for, for those automatic contributions being a critical thing in terms of just you know setting setting it up setting it up and not just setting and forgetting but every year making those increases over time we, we saw from fourth quarter 2020 to fourth quarter 2021 and eight percent in that size of automatic contribution so it's a great time of year to really think about do I want to allocate more of my income to uh, this longer term goal and of course over that 18 year period it, it really does ride out the uh, market volatility and just dollar cost averages in, into that that longer term goal. So um, if anything, a, a number of people kind of point towards, you know, with, with the market, you know, being down, it's a great time to dollar cost average into the market. So um, it, and that that theme of automatic contributions uh, aligns well with that that uh, reference towards that nudge book we had mentioned as well. Rough, roughly speaking, we've been, you know, looking at the automatic contributions uh, since 2008 time frame and lo and behold it really you know boils down to six dollars a day it used to be one gallon of gas a day but now, now the gas price of gas coming down a little bit but lo and behold six dollars a day is, is not um in a um just a out of line number in terms of just you know you know setting up an account making those automatic contributions starting small and starting early and um saving and saving efficiently and saving often you know to uh, achieve these long-term goals it, it's a, it's a way to go broadly speaking for industry announcements product updates uh, research releases, big picture status board. Uh, one of the mar uh, one of the bigger topics is market volatility, and a number of five TM plans has been adding in, have been adding in stable value uh, into their into their investment lineup. That red box really just lists out the plans that have or will make a um a, a add stable value in, in a, into their investment lineup in in 2022. So it's a it's a theme that we're seeing run across the whole industry as we are seeing. Broadly speaking, the, the inclusion of ESG investment options into the uh, investment lineups, it, it, it is a investment type that tends to uh, attract younger account owners and younger account beneficiaries. So it does provide an opportunity for um, to attract a, a new new audience and could be interesting. So roughly as of today, there's there's 33 of of 90 three five to nine savings plans offering 44. ESG investment options. It's the SAS board we're track, we, we track and, and we, we will continue to report on. Um, Tim touched upon the expansion of qualified expenses uh, for 529 plans over to you know, student loans, K-12 tuition, apprenticeship programs, and broadly speaking, um, it's a topic of interest in, in terms of just you know, people you know, learning more, getting more familiar with using it. So uh, it's, a, it's a timely theme because um, broadly speaking, um, you know the the goal of of saving being and paying for college has now expanded towards education overall as as well. So and, and that's a great development. We, we'll be hearing and learning more over time. And another topic we've been seeing is is five T nines have uh, become easier to to do. Whether it's the direct sold channel or the advisor sold channel, it's just easing the process, making it easier to do, easier to open up accounts. And broadly speaking, we expect the trend to continue in terms of just ease of business becoming easier and easier. We did a uh, field did a survey of advisors in October 2022. Um, you know, a survey of advisors, and and we're going to be releasing it next week. Five two nine distribution analysis 2022. But broadly speaking, that this you know shows um, overall that education financial planning is part of the overall holistic financial plan. That five two nines are the primary tool used to achieve that goal. And and um, you know, broadly speaking, that five two nines are a multi generational tool that helps um, you know pull that family together, not just your your clients, but your grandchildren and great grandchildren as well. So just making that a part of a larger conversation um we looking at the questions and answer we we answered one uh Skylar Thiessen of of edify what is the trend in withdrawals pre and post pandemic broadly speaking we've I I actually interpret it to be broadly speaking 529s have continued to help families to save and save efficiently and pay for for more expenses over time and, and that's that's great it shows success you know for 529 plans overall so it, it's a great trend um, that the distributions for five tens has was not impacted by um, by the you know pandemic 
pre versus post. But I do have did have a question for for Tim. Uh, what is the twenty five dollar uh, back to school essential, and, and how many families did that, that did that help overall? Yeah, it's just uh, uh, using that the uh, the minimum contribution of uh, letting you know of the the minimum contribution of twenty five dollars and uh, encourage people to to get started. And, uh, and again, to the point, like it, with, uh, you were just saying about uh, what happened during the pandemic, and and then you know we've seen uh, people uh, reluctant, you know, to get started now with the the current uh, uh, you know market headwinds and and the things that, that are going on, and so uh, but but uh, we found that people that did start, it, it, or that they they have uh, either. Through gifting or or through through some other way, that uh, we, we give away a lot of lot of money as well. Once they get started, they they will they're likely to contribute, and and that 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 continues that momentum of saving and investing. Thank you, Tim. And what is the new grade saving strategy? Um, can you can you provide an introduction? This sounds interesting, and <laughs> before to, to learn more. It's, it's just different ways of uh, of getting at your savings. Uh, it, you know they're. They're, they're countless, uh, it, you know, because uh, it, to like the questions, when's the best time to start to how much should I save and to everything in between. Uh, there's there's different ways that, uh, the, to make the saving uh, fun. Uh, you know, one, I, I think uh, involve the beneficiary, you know, to talk about uh, saving for, for education. What uh, we found is that uh, having that conversation, the, uh, you know, the, it becomes, it creates an expectation, even though you might uh, not be settling, you know, selling down and it's like, you're going to go to a particular school and this is what you're going to do at a young age. But if, if uh, the beneficiary knows that that uh, parents, grandparents, family, whatever it may be, are, are saving for an education opportunity after high school, then there's a, a likelihood that's what the expectation is and they're going to do that. Uh, you know, saving maybe intermediate goals, uh, you know, given a different, uh, at each grade point, you know, that you, you, uh, you link uh, to increasing your, your 529, you know, to that at that particular time. And, and so that is, is going, you may start out uh, modestly whenever, whenever baby is born or maybe when they are in, they start in first grade. And then maybe each grade you're, you're increasing those contributions, uh, you know, at that, at that anniversary or that graduation from, from that, you know, whether it's uh, elementary school, middle school, uh, to increase it. All this is just designed to, is, is to reinforce and uh, the, the habit of saving. And, and then again, at the, at the end, basically what, what you want to reach is, is a, a level of happiness. Uh, I, I like to submit that happiness is graduating with little or no debt and going out to that exciting uh, career opportunity and you know, you know li living your, your life not under the shadow of student loan debt for many years. Now uh, we we have, we have three three more questions and, and we'll we'll get to them. The first one is a a grandparent asked if students are restricted to schools in Ohio only when you participate in Ohio's five two nine. Um, it's a timely question and um, I I know that even. Uh, my my uncle who who worked for the IRS uh, tried to you know had had that myth as well. So so Tim, please um please correct the the myth buster. Yeah, I, I think I think we you know we can't say it enough because you you're absolutely right. It, it's it's still out there. We're asked that a lot, and the short of the answer is, is no. Uh, you you can take your five two nine uh, any anywhere in the in the country that beneficiary can. Uh, we we would like for you to to choose uh, uh, you know our plan and and uh, you know choose an education opportunity here in Ohio. But as I said earlier, that that's not always the the case. And uh, and so the you know you're not you're definitely not. And and uh, to Paul's uh, point, we get asked that a lot too uh, by by people that, that that are in either the financial industry or or you know in in the know about about the you know finances and investments. And um, you know, and the, and the answer is still no. You're not. You're not limited. Now, I want to add. Uh, you know, with, with our, our plan, we have a, a variable plan that has a direct and an advisor component to it. Our uh, principal partner in the advisor space is BlackRock. On the direct side is Vanguard and Dimensional Fund Advisors. Uh, some states have a prepaid plan. Now, sometimes the wires get crossed about that, and and now there there may be. Uh, a prepaid plan in a given state 
that that does have those limitations to it. So so just look at what what type of plan you're investing in. But here in Ohio, uh, it, whether you're a director or advisor, you're you're free to uh, to use those uh, at any uh, uh, qualified educational entity, trade school, technical school, college. That's great. We have uh, two more questions. My, my first one is community events, and it relates to, uh, can you give me a little bit more information on, on, on the NHL Columbus Blue Jackets? Um, you know, me being a Bruins fan, I, <laughs> well, but I did want to ask about the Columbus Blue Jackets. I, I guess we dropped in the link, uh, an update, but yeah, Tim, Tim if you give me a quick update. Yeah, we've been really impressed if you pulled a, a Blue Jackets hat there, but uh, okay, I, I know you got to be true to your, true to your team there. Uh, but yeah, we, I, I, I mentioned this also earlier, we, we love giving away uh, money. And uh, we, we have uh, among our partnerships with uh, every uh, professional sports team in Ohio, save uh, two or three of them. And uh, with the, specifically with the, the Reds, the Bengals, uh, the Guardians, and the Columbus Blue Jackets, uh, and uh, the uh, FC Cincinnati, we give away $10,000 uh, savings award e each season. And uh, very easy, uh, we're in market right now with the Blue Jackets, hence the, the, the uh, hockey reference. And uh, anyone, whether you're uh, a 529 account owner now uh, you know, or not, uh, you, you can enter this uh, one email per day. Uh, you can reach it through our social media, visit our webpage, you can get the links. I'm sure our folks are putting those up right now even, so you can go to that. Uh, and you enter the contest. And what, what happens is the grand prize uh, recipient uh, receives a $10,000 college savings award. So if you already do trust us with your savings and investments, that's great money to add to that, which you've already started. If you're new, uh, then this is great seed money to get started. And then each of uh, the sports uh, entities you know, uh, offer an in-arena, in-stadium opportunity where the, the grand prize winner and their guests get to come to a, a hockey game in this case, or football, baseball game. And, uh, you know, those respective teams wine and dine them with a, with a suite. And, uh, and it's, it's just a, a great, a great overall experience. You, you get that, that benefit and fun to it. Uh, although uh, kids are spoiled by those because they think that's the way you go to, to these games. And so if they go to a subsequent games, they, they're probably asking their parents, grandparents, it's like, oh, wait a minute, you know, we, we where, where's the suite? But uh, it, it's all good fun, and uh, yeah, we we do give away uh, smaller uh, uh, awards, uh, five hundred twenty nine dollars up to that ten thousand dollars. And so follow us on social media, visit our webpage uh, to keep up with those, and uh, and uh, hopefully you'll uh, you'll enter, and um, and that would be great. That if um, you know, we find a, a, a our, the recipient of the CBJ was like. Hey, I heard you talking about it on the webinar with ISSMI, and uh, lo and behold, look look at that. So, sounds great. And the last question, you know, coming in from Rachel, what, what are you most uh, um, what are you most optimistic about in twenty twenty three? And I'll, I'll I'll say my response that, that the broadening qualified expenses, the automatic contributions coming in, demand for education, you know, broadly continuing, and and that, that demand for education planning, and and also the the new mobile apps, and just the ease of you know, just ease of saving, you know, continuing to increase the awareness, the understanding, the, the energy, and broadly speaking, um, you know, the, you know, the, the momentum around five channels and college financial planning is, is growing. Um, Tim, do you have a, a final, final, do you have a response to that? And then final takeaway? Yeah, I, I mean, we endeavor uh, to make it better and uh, try to demystify 529s as much as possible. Uh, I, I mentioned we enhance our, our web pages because it does us no good and, and either our account owners or potential account owners any good. If you go to a web page and you can't figure out heads or tails of what, you know, what to do uh, or, or how to get things started. And so, so we, we work very hard to make that a, a, a positive experience. Paul mentioned the mobile apps. It's a reality of our of our time here. More and more banking, financial institutions, you can you can handle these transactions, manage your accounts uh, with a mobile application. And, and so we've launched a, a trusted mobile app and uh, we look to enhance that coming in the coming year. And, and to that, uh, I, I would uh, say don't don't dismay, don't be discouraged about the, about the stock market. Uh, the stock market is a good tool 
uh, to save and invest uh, for any of a number of things. And in particular, what we're talking about here is the 529. And, and so uh, keep the faith and stay the course uh, because uh, the, the expenses are unlikely that they're gonna go down. Uh, there, there's unlikely to be a complete uh, cross the board universal forgiveness of student loans or a complete universal uh, free, free college, uh, free education for all. There are going to be expenses and uh, you, you have to, to, to live it and trust us on this, uh, you know, that, that saving and investing and whenever that time comes and you're just, you know, making a withdrawal from your 529 to get at those and uh, it, it, it proves for a carefree experience. And, um, and lastly, all of us here at uh, Ohio's 529 College Advantage, uh, you know, wish uh, all of you uh, and uh, your, your uh, families and friends uh, a very happy holiday season. And uh, let, let's all hope that uh, 2023 is a happy and prosperous and healthy new year. Thank you, Tim. Save and save efficiently. It's a long-term 18-year goal typically. And thank you for your time and engagement today, Tim, and for the attendees here today. Please feel fill out the post web in our survey replay will be available tomorrow please let us know if we can help in any way in the meantime happy holidays happy new years save and save efficiently thank you so much for your time thank you